kasama. May mga bagay na simple lang pero nagiging mas masaya kapag may kasama. May mga bagay na hindi basta-basta pero pag may kasama, kinakaya. May mga bagay na kahit kaya mo naman mag-isa, nagiging mas makabuluhan kapag may kasama. Minsan iiyak, madalas tatawa. Mula sa pinakamaliit na bagay hanggang sa pinakamalaking problema. Sasamahan kang manalangin, tutulungan kang magtiwala. Kaya sa inyo, nakasama ko na mula noon. At sa mga makakasama ko pa, nagsisilbing tulay para maranasan ang tunay na pag-ibig niya na walang hanggan. Sama-sama tayo, saan man makarating, saan man dalhin, magkakasama sa paglalakbay. My name is Rev. For those of you who are here for the first time, isa po ako sa mga pastors dito sa Victory. At meron po tayong bagong series for the next three weeks. We are going to have uh, this series. It's called On a Journey. Kasi lahat po tayo nasa journey ng buhay. Nasa paglalakbay po tayo ng buhay. Kami po ng asawa ko, we love to travel. Kaya every now and then, we would just get a round trip, you know, round trip from Monumento to Baclaran and back and forth and stuff like that. You know, just looking at the scenery of Pasig River and there. No, but kidding aside, we, we love to, to travel. And uh, my wife, isa sa pag nagta-travel siya, isa sa mga gusto niyang, ano is yung mga airports. Gusto, yun ano, talagang kinikilatis niya. Pag nag- Ako kasi, airport is what? Doon lang lumaland yung aeroplano at nagte-take off. So, hindi ako masyadong ano sa mga airport. Mas gusto ko yung destination, kung saan kami pupunta. Basta get me to the destination, that's it. And minsan ganun tayo sa journey, no? iba-iba tayo ng ano. Sabi ng iba, it's the destination that matters. Sabi naman ng iba, hindi, it's the journey that matters. Ganun. Pero titignan natin, as we are on a life journey, makikita natin na sa buhay din natin, may man, meron tayong mga tinatawag na sub-journeys sa buhay natin. And recently, yung sa atin, we celebrate our journey of love. Tama? Valentine's Day, right? No one's excited. It's like, what? Ba may Valentine's Day? Meron po. Kami po ng wife ko, we, we celebrated Valentine's Day sa isang, uh, well, cafe or restaurant na malapit lang po sa amin. Ayaw po namin lumabas dahil akala ko matraffic. Apparently, hindi pala ganun ka-traffic pag Valentine's Day ngayon because everybody's doing it either before or after, no? But minsan, pag, may, pag mga ganitong Valentine's Day, yung iba sa atin, merong kurot sa puso, no? Kasi parang feeling natin, hindi tayo maka-relate. Kasi nga, buti pa ang baga, malapit sa puso. May mga ganun tayo, mga hugot, buti pa ang deadline, hinahabol. Buti pa ang Wi-Fi, may connection. But I want to tell you, if you celebrated this Valentine's Day as a single person, don't worry about it. You are already complete in Christ. Amen? Yes. Amen. Come on. Ulitin natin yan. Laksan natin ang amen, single people. Yes. Amen. Yes. Don't let culture or society tell you na, ano mo, wala ka pang ganito, wala ka pang ganyan, kawawa ka naman. Hindi ka kawawa. Eh, hindi ka kawawa. Sabi mo, sa katabi mo, hindi ako kawawa. <laughs> hindi, 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 hindi ka kawawa. I'm telling you. But if you know that you're called to marriage, you know, put your faith in God. Alam ni God ang ginagawa niya, amen? As, and importantly, yung pag-uusapan po natin ngayon about this journey of faith, no? Hopefully, yung mga singles dito will realize, grabe, the opportunity that God has given me as a single person, ibang klase. Amen? So when you understand that, hindi ka na mag-tweet ng mga ganito, No? Hindi ka na maiinis. Diba? Ma-appreciate mo na. February 14, it's a love month. So what? Great! Kaming dalawa ni God, okay na kami. And if somebody comes along, sino siya? Ano siya? Bonus. Bonus lang siya. Amen? Hindi siya yung ultimate. 
And so as we look at this series on a journey, we will see that God has called us to be in a journey of faith. At ito ang importante sa journey of faith na to, kasi sa ibang journey mo, pwede ka magkamali. Journey of education, yung iba sa atin, napilitan lang sa kurso natin. Diba? Kasi sabi ni nanay, sabi ni tatay. And then, pag graduate ka na, nagtrabaho ka, may mga kilala ko, after a while na nagtrabaho, nag-aral ulit sa gusto talaga nilang kurso. And it's, well, it's okay na magko-course correction ka. And some of us, our journey of in our career, maaring napunta ka sa isang trabaho na hindi mo gusto. And someday you're believing God na mapunta ka sa trabaho ng gusto mo talaga. Yung passion mo, iko, ika nga, kung saan ka create ni God na maging fruitful. And may mga course correction tayong gagawin. In our journey of faith, meron din tayong mga course correction na gagawin. At napaka-importante mo itong journey of faith because ang journey of faith na to will determine your journey of life. And God has called all of us, invited us to be in this journey of faith faith as followers of Jesus as disciples of Jesus if you are here today I hope that you're here because you want to get to know who God is and to follow him for the rest of your life with all passion and gusto sana po ganun pero minsan kailang ma- maintindihan natin kailang tingnan natin yung journey natin kasi baka akala natin na sa journey tayo ng faith hindi pala mali pala ang tinatahak natin because Jesus said this in John 8 verse 31. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Totoo kayong mananampalataya. Sandali lang. Ang sinasabihan niya nito, ang mga taong naniwala na. Bakit pa niya kinlarify? Because could it be na pwede pala tayong maniwala, pero hindi tayo sumusunod. Maari pa lang, fan lang tayo. Bakit? Kasi in ngayon, maging Kristiyano. Right? In. Dami mga artista mga Kristiyano. So in, di ba? Or fan lang tayo kasi Sunday nandito ka, Sunday in, Sunday out. Why? Well, you feel in your bones, no? The wind of the Holy Spirit. Aircon lang po yan. And ang komportable mo rito. At mamaya, mamaya. Ayan na, oh, pipikit na ang mata mo. Okay, maya, maya. Sige, I'll give you five minutes. Meron kasi, meron mga suki na eh, di ba? So, fan lang ba tayo? Or finifeke natin? It's all a facade. Doble kara. Yeah, Kristiyano sa Sunday. Pag Monday, nakalimutan na. Nakalimutan na ang pagpapure at pananampalataya sa Diyos. Pati asawa, nakalimutan na. No? Pero pag Saturday, balik ulit. Kasi magsasunday na naman eh. Family day. Yan. It's a facade. Another fee. Pharisaical. Okay? Yung self-righteous na tayo. Yung dahil ikaw, every Sunday ka nandito, tapos may kilala ka na, hmm, Three Sundays in a month lang. Hi, kulang ang faith niyan. Oh, ganun tayo. But God has called us to be what? Followers. And hopefully, that's what we are and that's who we are. But what does it mean to be a true disciple of Jesus? Jesus said it himself. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciple. So for the next three weeks, titignan natin ang mga sinabi ni Jesus na if you blank, you are truly my disciples. So today, if you abide in my word, abide to live, to live out, to desire, to obey. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, obey. obey. Yan, ano? Kasi, ang sarap pakinggan eh, pero minsan, pag obey na ang pinag-uusapan, ha, kailangan bang mag-obey? Minsan, Pastor Ray, ako, Pagkatapos namin mag-preaching, minsan may mga lumalapit na, alam mo, na-bless ako sa preaching mo. Ayan. But did you know that mas mabibless ka kung i-obey mo ang preaching ng word ni God? Hindi lang yung narinig ko, oh, I feel so good, oh, kilig on the inside. Hindi lang ganon. But you walk it out and live it out. 
if you abide in my word, not the miracles, not the signs and wonders, not the tingling sensations, the word of God. Yun yung titingnan natin ngayon. Because every journey has a beginning, has a roadmap. And for the next three weeks, yun yung titingnan natin. Titingnan natin yung beginnings of our journey. And our journey begins with an encounter with Jesus, just like Peter, James, Andrew, and John had that encounter with Jesus. And when Jesus saw them, sabi ni Jesus sa kanila, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Narinig na natin to, di ba? No elementary pa ako, kinukwento sa akin to ng, ng religion teacher namin, kinukwento niya na si Jesus daw naglalakad sa dalampasigan ng Lake of Galilee. Tapos may nakita siyang mga fishermen. At sabi niya, Kay, kay James, tsaka kay, uh, kay Andrew, tsaka kay Peter, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And then sabi sa Matthew, and they left their nets and followed him. So, tatlo na sila. Naglalakad siya, may nakita na naman siyang dalawang brothers. Si James, tsaka si John, the sons of Zebedee, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And so they dropped their nets and followed him. So, lima na sila. At ang tingin ko no, nung elementary ako, grabe oh, hindi nila kilala si Jesus ha. Nakita lang nila. Sinabi lang sa kanila, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Sabi ng teacher ko, ganun ang faith nila. Na first time nilang nakita si Jesus, sinunda na nila. Later on, as I read my Bible, that is not the case. Hindi pala ganun. Hindi pala nila first time lang nakita si Jesus. Na para bang, ikaw, may taong first time mo lang nakita. At sinabi sa'yo, uy, sumunod ka sa akin. Susunod ka ba? <laughs> Kung ganun kang klasing tao, we're here to help you. Okay? You need counsel. Okay? Hindi ganon. Ito ang backstory. Yan yung titingnan natin. Because we can say, ah, to be a follower, of, a true follower of Jesus, we must obey the word of God. But what does it look like for us? Because a lot of people are saying, I'm obeying God. Pati kulto nagsasabi, ah, sumusunod kami sa Panginoon. Pero what does it mean for a true follower, true disciple of Christ to obey? What does it look like in his life? And that's what we're going to look at in Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. The encounter of Jesus and Peter together with James and John. If you have your Bibles with you, we're going to look at that right now. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, or the lake of Galilee. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep, and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish. And their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. So this is not the first encounter of Peter with Jesus. As early as Luke chapter 4, Jesus was already healing people, preaching. Naririnig na ni Peter kung sino si Jesus. As a matter of fact, in chapter 4, pumunta na si Jesus sa bahay ni Peter to heal his mother-in-law. Okay? So meron na siyang interaction. He knows Jesus, but he's not yet a follower of Jesus. Naririnig niya si Jesus, nakita niya si Jesus, kilala na si Jesus. 
large crowds were already following Jesus. Large crowds. The popularity of Jesus was surging already. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them. They were washing their nets. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Tapos na yung pangingisda nila. Ang mga fishermen, nangingisda sila sa gabi. Bakit? Para madilim. Para hindi sila kita ng isda. Okay? Kasi kung kita sila ng isda, hindi lalapit yung isda. Okay? Bakit? Kasi nalaman na nila through Nemo, Diba, nagkwentuhan na. Ingat kayo sa mga ganyan. Okay. So now, they were washing their nets, preparing it for the next night to go out and fish again. Ibig sabihin, tapos na ang trabaho. Pagod sila, inaayos na ang nila. Matutulog sila after this. Tingnan mong ginawa ni Jesus. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land and he sat down and sought the people from the boat. Bakit ako natawa? Si Jesus hindi nagpaalam. Di ba? Si Jesus, ano? Pag pumasok siya sa buhay natin, hindi siya nagpapaalam. Hindi siya sasabihin, ah, ah, Rev, ah, ah, okay ka lang ba na papasok ako sa buhay mo? Hindi. Makikialam siya sa buhay natin. No? Ganun si Jesus. He got into the boat of Peter. Pagkatapos nun, ano pang sinabi niya kay Peter? Peter, pakipush. So si Peter naman, since tapos na trabaho niya, wala. O oh, sige, Lord, gamitin mo kung anong meron ako. Ayan. At yan yung gusto nating marinig minsan. Gamitin mo kung ano yung gust- meron ako, Panginoon. And rightly so. Because pag-aari naman niya lahat. So gamitin mo, Lord. Kailangan mo ng boat? Ayan. Diba? Kailangan mo yung buhay ko? Sige, Lord. Sabi pa nga natin, when Jesus is in your boat, something amazing happens. Which actually true. Because later on, we will see that. So, nag-preach si Jesus, tapos nung natapos siyang mag-preach, when he had finished pre- speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now, remember, ma- umaga na po ito. Maaring 9 a.m., 10 a.m., ganun. Pagod na si na Simon. Katatapos lang nila kagabi, buong magdamag, wala silang nahuli. We toiled all night and took nothing. Walang nangyari, Lord. Pero sabi ni Jesus, mag-catch, mangisda ulit tayo. Now, si Jesus po, sa panahong ito, ang tingin sa kanila, sa kanya ng mga, ng mga tao, he's a rabbi, a teacher, and a miracle worker. Okay? A miracle worker. Nagpapagaling ng may sakit. And a preacher. He speaks about the word of God. So kung ikaw si Peter noon, siguro nasa isip mo, talaga to, Halatang karpintero. Halatang karpintero. Akala mo, mangingisda tayo sa um... Eh, gabi nga kami nangingisda eh. Pag umaga, hindi masyadong maraming catch. Tapos sasabihin niya, di ba? So, if you were Peter, ano kayo nasa isip mo, Lord? Actually, hindi pa Lord to. Di ba? The word master here is a, is a word of, of uh, respect. Because he's a rabbi. Ganon. So, hindi pa Lord. Parang, ano kayong gagawin ko? Papahek ba ako dito? ba? Mas alam ko kung yung ginagawa ko. Ganon ba yung feeling natin minsan kay God? May pinapagawa si God, tapos sabi natin, Lord, alam mo, hindi mo kasi naintindihan eh. Mm. ba may mga ganon? Yung sasabihin sa'yo ni God, alam mo, patawarin mo na, Lord, hindi mo kasi naintindihan eh. Etong ginawa sa akin yan, at eto yung naramdaman ko. Or sa business mo, manghimasok si God, Lord, Di mo kasi naiintindi ang kalakaran dito sa Pilipinas eh. No? Iba dito, Lord. Di ba? May over, may under, may including the table dito. So kung gagawin ko tong pinapagawa mo, lugi ako. No? Kasi logically speaking, it doesn't make sense na babalik tayo. Kung gusto mo God, or hindi pa pala God, kung gusto mo Jesus, mamayang gabi ulit, sama ka. Pero eto ang gusto kong i-highlight. Sabi ni Peter, Master, we toiled night and day, took nothing. And I'm an expert. But, at your word, I will let down the nets. At your word. But, at your word. Do you have those but 
at your word moments with God. Yung may pinapagawa siya sa'yo, pero sa tingin mo, parang, hmm, Lord. Parang hindi pwede, pero Lord, at your word, gagawin ko. Yung sinabi niya sa'yo, husband, yung nag-discuss yung kayo ng misis mo, at kahit sa ang korte mo dalhin, mali siya. At hindi lang siya mali. Maling, 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 mali. Okay? Wala akong pinaghugutan dito, okay? Example lang to, okay? Yung, alam mo yun, tapos, habang nagte-pray ka, nag ka kay God, nangusap sa yung Panginoon, apologize to your wife. Huh? Lord, masasana yan eh. Di ba? Masasana yan. Apologize to your wife. Lord, hindi mo naiintindihan. Mali siya. Kahit sa ang korte, walang judge na, wala ngang lawyer na magdi-defend dun eh. Dahil sobrang mali. Apologize to your wife. Wow. May mga ganun ba kayo, husbands? Babait nyo ah. <laughs> Or minsan sa business. Or minsan sa mga anak natin. Sa mga kaibigan natin. Or minsan simply that you're driving somewhere and God tells you, don't pass there. Lord, ito yung pinaka-shortcut. Don't pass there. Or minsan, pagbasa mo ng word ni God, may sinasabi talaga siya na matagal mo nang dapat gawin. Pero hanggang ngayon, hindi mo pa ginagawa. Sana this is your but at your word moment. Because as followers of Jesus, true disciples, obedience to God's word, abiding in His word means this. It is submission to His authority. Submission to His authority. And there will be times, there will be times, God, this does not make sense. It doesn't make sense that I will give generously to this person. There will be times, sasabihin sa'yo ni God, o oh, yung taong yan na may utang sa'yo, huwag mo nang singilin. Now, just to clarify, wala po akong pinagkakautangan dito. Okay? Hindi po ako nagpaparinig. Pero minsan may ganun. May nagkakautang sa'yo, sasabihin sa'yo ni God, huwag mo nang singilin yan. Wow, are you going to do that? It doesn't make sense. Now, for some of us might think, Lord, ako yung may utang eh. Word mo ba ngayon na huwag kong bayaran? Hindi. <laughs> bayaran mo yan, dude. Huwag mong baliktarin ang Panginoon, okay? Again, God, you honor God when you fulfill your responsibility. Amen? Diba kayo iba? Yes, yun yung word ni God sa akin. Huwag mong ipilit, please. There will be times that God will tell you as you read the word, as you pray, as you become in tune with His Holy Spirit. But let me tell you this, follower of Christ, you're not a fan. You're not here to fake it. We're here to follow. And obedience to God's word is submission to His authority. Amen? And I hope some of you will listen because some of us here, we, have, we are in a but at your word moment. So moving on, when they had done this, sumunod sila, di ba? They enclosed a large number of fish. What a catch! Pinagamit ni Peter yung boat kay Jesus, Sinabi ni Jesus, mangisda kayo. Hmm, doesn't make sense. Pero sige, susunod ako. Nung sumunod siya, grabe yung blessing. No? Nangyari na ba sa inyo yun? Yung doesn't make sense, pero nung sumunod ka, grabe yung return. Meron palang blessing na ipapagawa sa iyo ang Panginoon. Meron palang ganun. Meron blessing na ipapagawa. Meron blessing na ibibigay. And sa so sobrang grabe ng catch, habang habang pinupul ni Peter tsaka ng kasama niya sa boat, ang dami ah. So, kailangan ng tulong. Nagpatulong siya. At yung tumulong, so sobrang dami, they began to sink. And I can imagine Peter, tsaka yung mga partners niya na si James and John, na ang sabi siguro nila, tama na! Di ba? Ibalik ang mga isda. <laughs> Bakit? Eh, pag... Pag sobra pa, 
Lahat tayo lulubog. And it's a beautiful picture that we can never outgive God. That when we obey God, it is for our benefit. Hindi tayo lugi pag sumunod tayo sa Panginoon. Even if it feels like it doesn't make sense, even if it's, Lord, the circumstances doesn't fit, it's going to be for our benefit. We can never outgive God. Never. Ang ganda ng picture na to. The nets were starting to break. At iniisip natin dito, ano, no, Lord, sana ganyan ako, yung pag-harvest ko, yung pag ko, you know, the ATM is starting to break. <laughs> sana ganun, ano? Ganun yung mga iniisip natin eh. Kasi fish equals money. Parang ganun. At si the blessings of the Lord, makikita natin mamaya, grabe, ibang klase ang nangyari kay Simon, kay James, tsaka kay John. And I'm, I'm supposing also that Andrew was here because he was also a fisherman. He's with his brother, Simon. They began to sink. Now remember, Simon went to the same lake. Same lake, same place. Nothing, walang anong, walang, alam mo yun, nothing magical about the lake. The only difference is this, Jesus was in his boat. And when Jesus is in your boat, whatever he's calling you to do, do it. Because he will never leave you nor forsake you. And there will be an amazing, not just return or blessings, but an amazing thing that will happen in your life. At nung makita ni Peter yan, because he's a fisherman, at he realized this. Itong nangyayari na to ngayon, itong catch ng fish na to ngayon, imposible ito. Imposible ito. Umaga, hindi gabi. Dapat wala kaming mahuli ngayon, pero may nahuli kami. At hindi lang huli ito. Isang katuotak na huli ito. The boats were beginning to sink. And so when he realized that, he looked at Jesus, but now he saw Jesus in a different way. That this, Jesus is not just a teacher. Jesus is not just a miracle worker, a healer. Not just a preacher. Jesus is something else. Not an ordinary man. Kaya nung makita ng Panginoon, anong sabi niya? Lord, lumayo ka sa akin. Makasalanan akong tao. From master to Lord. From a master that, you know, a sign of respect now to Lord, a sign of submission. Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Because what's happening here is impossible unless God is the one at work. And I pray this, that in your journey of faith, in your journey of life, you will encounter God time and time again to see him for who he is so that it will give you a realization of who or what you are. Chuck Smith said this, you never truly see yourself until you see yourself in the light of Jesus and who he truly is. And when Peter realized that, Peter realized this, he deserves judgment. He is a sinful man. He deserves condemnation. He is a sinful man. He deserves rejection. He is a sinful man. Parang katulad ni Isaiah nung makita niya si Lord sa temple. Ano sabi ni Isaiah? Woe is me, I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips. And the word unclean lips there, ibig sabihin kung ano-ano yung lumalabas sa ano niya. Hindi lamang mura. Hindi ibang bagay pa na kahindik-hindik at hindi ka aya aya sa Panginoon. He saw God and He saw Himself. And when we get into that encounter, the good thing about this is that Jesus comes to us not to condemn us, but to save us. See, most of the time, we see ourselves in the light of who we are and in the light of who people are. Yung minsan, 
may yabang tayo, di ba? Hindi naman ako makasalanan eh. Oh. Or kung alam mo makasalanan ka, makasalanan ako pero makasalanan ka rin naman, di ba? Tama? Parehas lang tayo. At eto lang, eto pa. Tayo mga makasalanan dito, yung kasalanan natin, hindi ganun kagrabe dun sa kasalanan nung sa kabilang row. Tama? Tama? Ah, oh, ganun tayo. So, we, we feel like, ah, oh, okay lang ako. I'm good enough. Tapos yung sasabihin naman ng row na to, aba, oo, oh, makasalanan nga kami, pero hindi kami kasing kasalanan ng nasa balcony. Kita mo, hindi nga sila makababa. <laughs> oh, di ba? Yung balcony, wala na silang may turo. Sorry sa inyo, guys. Okay? Pero ganun tayo. Yung sasabihin mo kay God, Lord, alam ko makasalanan ako, pero... Hindi ako kasing makasalanan ng nasa row na yan. Oh. And so we think we're okay. But when we have an encounter, because that's where it starts, this journey of faith, an encounter with the living God, we realize, Lord, wala akong maipagmamalaki. Wala akong maipagyayabang. Ang challenge lang, problema kay Peter because hindi pa niya talaga kilala si Jesus. Nagkaroon siya ng self-pity party. Lord, makasalanan ako, layuan mo ako. Uh-huh. Kasi nakita pa lang niya, men, iba to. Diyos na to. Tao lang ako. Yun pa lang ang nakita niya. Hindi pa niya nakita ang pagmamahal ng Diyos na to. Kasi kung alam natin ang pagmamahal ng Diyos, ito yung sasabihin natin, Lord, makasalanan ako. Lumapit ka. L- lumapit ka, Lord. Dahil ikaw lang ang makakaligtas sa akin. Hindi yung karir ko, hindi yung pera ko, hindi yung pangalan ko, hindi yung church ko. Hindi yung kabutihan ko, ikaw lang. Lord, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Yan yung pagkakaintindi ni Peter. I am not worthy to be in your presence. And it's true. Totoo yun. Tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Ganda, di ba? Naka-Sunday dress yan. Gwapo. Di ba? Kahit nga hindi ka gumanon, grabe yung perf- perfume niyan. Amoy na amoy mo. Yung iba naman, taimtim na nananalangin hanggang ngayon. Di ba? With eyes closed and heads bowed down. Anyway. But I want to tell you, the person sitting next to you is a sinful person. And the person preaching to you is a sinful person. And there is no hope for us if we just rely on ourselves. Buti na lang ang ganda ng sinabi ng Panginoon kay Pedro. Sabi ni, ng Panginoon, do not be afraid. You're depending on your merits. You're depending on what you can do and what you cannot do. You're depending on your circumstance. Depend on me. Do not be afraid. And I love this phrase from the Lord because it means hindi gusto ng Panginoon, hindi niya pinlano na magkaroon tayo ng buhay na puro anxiety at fear. Kundi ang buhay na napagtatagumpayan na ang anumang challenges na dumating. Ano man ang sirkumstansya natin, mapagtatagumpayan natin. Bakit? Because Jesus is in our boat. Do not be afraid. And when we realize that, now we don't have to depend on what we cannot do and what we can't do in the circumstance. Grabe yung nangyayari sa buhay ngayon. Grabe yung health ko. Grabe yung nangyayari sa family namin. Lord, wala na bang pag-asa? No, do not be afraid. Because Jesus is with you. And He will do something about it. Amen? Amen? And when we are not just fans, not faking it, not pharisaical, but really followers of Jesus, we realize this. The obedience to God's Word means dependency on who God is. Why do we obey? Because we can depend on God. Why do we obey? We obey because He is trustworthy. And when he says, do not be afraid, it's not empty words. He's going to back it up with his power. And some of us are in that place today. We need to hear this from God. Do not be afraid. And I hope that you take his word for it. And say, God, 
I will depend on you. And I will not live a life of fear, of hopelessness, of helplessness, of depression. I will not be afraid. Amen? Hallelujah. Continuing on, Jesus said, from now on, you will be catching men. Or in other translation, fishers of men. Because catching men, all the single ladies, it's not what you think, okay? This is not it. Okay, but this is about having the purpose, having the calling of God. It's not just us who's going to follow. We're going to take others along with us. And here's what they did. They left everything and followed him. Now remember, sabi ko kanina, si Peter, pinahiram niya yung boat niya kay Jesus. Jesus blessed him with an overflowing catch of fish. But when he got to know who God is, when he really got to understand Jesus, that in his presence, instead of condemnation, he received mercy. Instead of judgment, he received grace. Instead of rejection, he received love. What did he do? He left everything, including the fish. Grabe, no? Why? Because now Jesus is the ultimate. Jesus is the most important. That when you understand who God is, obedience means He's the priority. That's why you're going to live what He called you to live. And sometimes He's going to say, leave that thing, even if it's not a sin issue. It's just that it's not, it's not for you. But most of the time, it's sin. Leave that life of homosexuality. Leave that life of adultery. Leave that relationship. Toxic sa'yo yan. But Lord, we're not doing anything bad naman eh. But God is saying to you, leave. Or leave that lifestyle. Wala kang relationship, bakit? Eh kung sino-sino yung mga relationship mo eh. Or leave that job. Lord, it puts money on the table. Drugs yan, anak. Leave it. Sugal yan. Lord, alam mo, pag nanalo ako dito, magpapatayo ako ng man, fifth floor ng EN building. Papanalunin mo lang ako, Lord. Leave it. Some of us, meron tayong but at your word. May sinasabi si God. Doesn't make sense. For some of us, do not be afraid. You're in a situation. I don't know, maybe it's your health. Maybe it's the health of your loved one. Maybe puno ka na ng utang. I don't know. But God is saying, do not be afraid. Now, for those who are puno ng utang, when I say do not be afraid, it doesn't mean utang pa more. Yeah, that's not it. But for some of us, leave. Leave. Where are you at? Where are you at? Because when Peter realized who Jesus is, he did all those things. With a word, holding on to the word of God. Because you said it, I will do it. Because you said it, I will not be afraid. Because you said it, I will leave everything. What you want me to leave so that I can follow you. But look at the life of Peter. When you look at the whole thing, hindi naman nung iniwan niya lahat, grabe na siya. Kasi minsan pag sinabi natin disciple, feeling natin may halo, kailangan may halo tayo, di ba? Tapos lahat ng, ng, ng ginagawa natin, parang hindi tayo nagkakamali. No, si Peter nagkamali din. Di ba? Nagmamaru si Peter. Anong sabi niya? Lord, kung ikaw talaga yan, palakarin mo ako sa tubig. Naglakad sa tubig. Nalunod sa tubig. Tapos sabi, sabi ni Peter, Lord, I know who you are. You are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. Sabi ni, ni Jesus sa kanya, Wow, amazing ka, Peter. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because this was not revealed to you by man, but my Father who is in heaven. And at the same time, Jesus said, I'm going to Jerusalem, I'm going to die. Sabi ni Peter, hindi mangyayari sa'yo lang, Lord. Nagmamaru ulit si Peter. Hindi mangyayari sa'yo yan. Hindi, ko, hindi ako papayag. Anong sabi sa kanya ni Jesus? Get behind me, Satan. Why am I showing this? Do not be afraid to go all out. Your journey of faith will have this and it will have this. Don't be afraid because Jesus is in your boat. Don't be afraid to leave what needs to be left because Jesus is in your boat. One of the greatest mistakes of Peter, his failures, when he denied Jesus. And some of us, we are in that category. Our lifestyles deny Jesus. 
I want to ask the music team to come. Our speech denies Jesus. And we feel like, Lord, do you still want me? And I want to show you what Jesus said before Peter denied Jesus because Jesus knew he will do it. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. I love this. Hindi po tinutukan ng Panginoon ang failure ni Peter. Huwag mo pong tuldukan ang failure mo. And the reason why I know you will not keep failing is this. Jesus is praying for you. Are you a real follower of Jesus? You're gonna make it. Amen? You're gonna make it. You're going to live a life of victory. You are going to make it. And God has still a calling for you. When you turn again, strengthen your brothers. So I want you to understand this. You are forgiven. You are restored. And you are sent. Hindi pa tapos ang pananampalataya mo. Amen? Why don't we all stand? Some of us, we are in this place, but at your word. If that's you, can you raise your hand? Alam mo lang. Lord, thank you for the faith. And thank you for the promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And we step out in faith and obedience. Some of us do not be afraid. If that's you, raise your hand. God, ano man ang sitwasyon namin, Panginoon. We depend on you. We are going to overcome. We are going to be blessed. We are going to be full of life and joy. Kahit yung health namin hindi maganda ngayon, Lord, we receive healing. At kahit hindi kami mahil ngayon, Panginoon, we continue not to be afraid. And some of us, you need to leave something. Sin. Lifestyles. God, hindi namin alam kung paano ang ano ang mangyayari pag sumunod kami dito. Ang alam lang namin is this. You are true to your word. At alam namin this is, we are a child of God and we will not leave. God, we will not live in fear. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite us, I want to declare that by faith, that we are no longer a slave to fear. Amen. We are no longer a slave to sin. And I want to declare that I am a child of God. And the Lord is with me. And I will live to glorify Him. He is authority. He is Lord, Redeemer, Savior, Healer. This one is for you, Lord. This heart is for you. And this life is for you. Hallelujah. You unravel me. With a melody You surround me with a song Of deliverance From my enemies Till all my fears are gone I'm no
some of us here today, when we heard the Word of God, the preaching of the Word of God, I sense that the Holy Spirit has already spoken in our hearts. And sinasabi ng Holy Spirit, Anak, you've been a fan for a long time. You're just, you're just a fan, Anak. Yung, yung iba naman, Anak, para kang Pharisee. Masyado kang legalistic. And you think you're good. You're better than other people. And yung iba naman, it's just a facade. Anak, pakitang tao lang yan para lang masabi ng iba, mabait ka, isa kang kristyano. I believe the Holy Spirit and God Himself is inviting us. If that's you, you're one of those, sinasabi ni Lord, it's about time. I want you to follow me. With all heads bowed and eyes closed, if that's you feeling mo, Lord, naging fan lang ako, hagang tingin lang ako, hanggang attend lang ako, Lord, I want to experience you just like Peter. If that's you today, you want to make that commitment, Lord, I want to follow you. I don't know kung kakayanin ko, Panginoon, but I believe you will grant me the grace to be able to follow. If that's you, would you lift up your hands? It's a sign of humility. It's a sign of surrender and dependence on God. Yes, I see those hands. I see those hands. God bless you. Lord, you see these hands, Panginoon. And you see their hearts. And Lord, their desire to follow you. But for some reason, Lord, because of circumstance, because of, Lord, yung pinagdaanan nila, yung, Lord, how they were raised up, Panginoon, seemingly parang hindi nila kayang gawin. But Lord, thank you that you have revealed to them your word of truth. That Lord, they can follow you and you're calling them right now to follow you, God. And I pray, Lord, may you grant them the grace, Lord God, to follow you, Lord, with all their hearts, Lord, no longer just a religious game, Panginoon. Nung nagpabait-baitan, just pakitang tao, Lord, we leave that, Lord God. Just like Peter, Lord, iniiwan na namin yun, Panginoon. And Lord, my prayer, my, our prayer, God, that Lord, as they could, as they, Lord, make that decision, God, and Lord, move in faith to follow you. I pray that you would reveal yourself to them, God, for who you are. Every single day, Lord, so that Lord, lalo silang ma-inlove sa inyo, Panginoon. Mas lalo silang, Lord, mamangha, Lord, they will behold you, God. Makita nila yung greatness nyo, yung splendor, yung authority nyo sa buhay namin, Panginoon. And it will cause them to completely forsake, Lord, everything that you call sin forsake that lifestyle, even forsake that relationship that does not honor you, God. Thank you, but because Lord, it is you who will grant us the grace to say no to all of those things and say yes to you. So maraming salamat, Panginoon, to sa mga Lord, nakataas ang kamay. Lord, we embrace them. Lord, may you affirm them that they are truly a child, Lord of God. Salamat, Panginoon, in Jesus' name. Let me just pray a prayer blessing. Lord, thank you, God. The Bible says, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord grant you peace. And may the hand, may the presence of the Almighty God be with you the rest of your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Come on, let's give God praise.